three tips to be a better open water swimmer. Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I am joined by the one and only Andy Horsfall Turner. Good Thanks to be here, mate. Yeah. Cheers for coming. We are at Clevedon Marine Lake. Now, as you might have seen by a few of my recent videos post Mallorca, I have mentioned one thing that I really want to focus on is my swim. And well, I mean, I'm joined by the best swimmer in triathlon, or is that a bit? Well, what? Would you hopefully reckon? one day we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, kind of like in two halves, really. Help Harry get better at swimming, or... <laughs> yeah. Nah, we're, we're, we're all friends here, we're all friends. So, uh, yeah, down here to give you a bit of assistance. Yeah, so for anyone who doesn't know Andy, he, I mean, pro athlete, pretty much lead out every single race that you're in, don't you, in the swim? Yeah, I come from a elite swimming background, so um, been doing triathlon now a few years, um, and, you know, it's a big asset just to have that what, 15 years of swimming background. Um, I specialize in open water swimming, so uh, the tactical awareness and that sort of stuff is kind of something I'm pretty, you know, I'd like to think pretty good at, and uh, hopefully I'm gonna help Harry today, you know, try and dial his open water swimming in a little bit, um, so that we can get an increase in performance, really. Yeah, nice, looking forward to it. Let's get the suits on. <laughs> So we've picked out three specific tips for me to become a better open water swimmer, but fingers crossed these tips will also translate and help you become a better open water swimmer as well. So over to Andy with tip number one. Okay, so yeah, me and Harry just basically had a big dive into basically your Mallorca performance. Um, and we kind of highlighted these, these areas where maybe tactically and technically Harry can kind of improve. Um, the first one we kind of spoke about was basically that I don't think Harry can swim in a straight line. Uh, <laughs> me and Harry started next to each other and he actually got the jump on me in the start. Um, but I don't know where he was swimming because he started swimming towards a different <laughs> island or something, I don't know. <laughs> so um, yeah, what we're gonna try and do to start off with is we're probably gonna jump in, uh, use the two green boys that we have over to our left. And basically what we wanna try and do is get really good at swimming in a straight line. Um, well, I guess one of the things to say is like, you guys can try this in your own like home pool or in open water. A lot of people can't swim in a straight line unless you're looking at the black line. So a good easy way is if you've got an empty lane at the pool is just to shut your eyes, uh, try and swim as straight as you can for like 10 strokes and try not to bump into the lane ropes. And actually just testing yourself regularly means that when you get into a race, you won't have that issue. Um, yeah, let's go give it a try. How you feel about that? I'm nervous because <laughs> I might make myself look like an idiot, but <laughs> let's go. Take two. <laughs> at this moment that he knew he f Interesting. Yeah, quite quite demoralising actually, because um, I realise I'm not swimming that straight. Yeah, and I guess it's probably a good point to say like one of the biggest things in, in open water swimming is 
it's probably actually the the sighting element and, and that's done on loads of videos and loads of people talk about you know different techniques to sight and that sort of stuff but actually being able to swim in a straight line means that you have to sight less yeah. um, and every time you sight you'll basically lift your head and your hips will drop um, so it makes you a slower swimmer um, but I think we just had a conversation there about how difficult it actually is to swim yeah. in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> Made myself look like an idiot for YouTube. <laughs> so um, yeah a couple of things that me and Harry discussed uh, just out of the water was basically he was basically leaning to the left hand side because of the way he was breathing so we spoke a little bit about trying to rotate to both sides to make sure that his stroke was nice and balanced and that's again that's something you can practice in the pool regularly but um, yeah I think if you can practice that more in open water and just using different points and trying to swim in straight lines without without sighting basically yeah. uh, it's only gonna make you more efficient and, and swim in straight lines yes Point one done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> completed it, mate. <laughs> so we're going to give it one more try. We might be here for the, for the whole day. <laughs> right, let's crack on. That's good enough. <laughs> first tip hopefully moves on to the second tip quite nicely so um, me and Harry are gonna try and have a little look at where you feel comfortable drafting um, so drafting is a big thing you know in <laughs> <wonder someone's> <laughs> fell in, in, uh, in some of these big open water races and these big triathlon races like Mallorca three and a half thousand people yeah in the pro race there's 55 of us you know there's always gonna be someone near you or around that you can try and draft off and we were chatting about, you know, how that drafting effect is on bikes, where well, it's even more in water, because look how thick it is. Mm. So um, yeah, there's two types of drafting we're gonna look at today, on the hip and then on the feet. And then also try and, yeah, basically for you, try and discover what you like the best or what yeah. works best for you. Okay, so yeah, what's, what's your experience with drafting? What do you like, what do you like, what do you not like? What, yeah. So I think I probably prefer being on the hips purely because when I'm on feet, I almost feel like I'm just in like a washing machine and I've got almost like slightly claustrophobic, like there's okay. something like right there and you're battering your face. <laughs> and it's almost like, it's just a bit off-putting. So I don't know if I'm doing that wrong. <laughs> no, so what we'll do is we'll have a little look at you swimming on the hip now. I think there's, there's kind of a couple of things there that are really, really important, which are, you know, if you are on the hip, you have control of, firstly, where you stay on their body. So for example, you're a right-sided breather, just like me. Yeah. I'd go on your left-hand side, yeah. and I'd try and position my head. It's gonna be a bit weird. Yeah. I'm gonna position my <laughs> head in line with your hip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, you've also got the effect that actually, if the swimmer you're next to starts to pull away a little bit, you have got the option then to move to the, the feet if yeah. you need to, if you can't keep on the hip. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing you mentioned there about the washing machine effect on the feet is I think you're probably just getting too close. Yeah. So there's kind of an there's kind of a drafting effect that probably lasts, you know, a couple of foot okay. past the back of their feet. Yeah. So actually you don't need to be swimming on top of their legs. You don't need their foot in your face. You yeah, don't need yeah. to be tapping their legs. Actually stepping back a meter, allowing that space for you to swim where you can still see the bubbles in the water. Yeah you're still going to be getting the drafting effect and sticking in the pack, but you're not going to get that washing machine effect. So yeah. hopefully we're going to have a little go at doing both now. Yeah, cool. And then hopefully I can kind of convince you that the, try and convince you, sorry, <laughs> kind of convince you. I'm going to try and convince you that actually my personal preference is feet. You know, I think it's just so much easier to yeah. follow. Um, so hopefully Am I, I also right in saying that swimming on feet is quicker? Or like it's more efficient for everyone? I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know the exact stats, but I remember reading somewhere that it's, you know, it's if, you, if you get 5% on the hip, you get 10% on the feet sort of okay. thing. So I think, okay. yeah, in theory, you do get more behind. Right, yeah. okay, cool. Let's give it a go. And the sun's come out as well.
guys hip ledge drafting. Um, we're going to basically switch it around now and go back with feet ledge drafting. I think I'm starting to convince Harry that feet ledge drafting is slightly easier, it's easier to move around. Um, yeah, let's go give it a go. So have I uh, have I convinced you yet? Um, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> I like I do. That it's definitely more comfortable on the feet, and I see the bigger benefit of it. I still feel a little bit more comfortable on the hips. Yeah, and I think like, why well, you probably we tried both there. Um, you've got quite a good feel for it, but I think just having the confidence that you know you can stick that hip, but you also are comfortable on the feet because yeah. you know sometimes. Sometimes you can choose your position, but other times you're just given it and yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, you're forced into it. So I think just having that kind of like, you know, that tool set, you mm. know, being able to basically adapt to anything is really important. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So I guess like, I think the thing that probably is quite applicable to like beginners or like entry level like age groupers mm -hmm. is that both of those sort of methods can be quite useful, but actually the swimming on the hip is probably more achievable mm. if you're an entry level swimmer because actually you're breathing and you're seeing that person quite regularly. Yeah. The second skill of swimming on the feet actually relates to our first tip, which is can you swim in a straight line? Because yeah. if you can't swim in a straight line, it doesn't matter if you're on someone's feet because you're going to go off anyway. And so. also then you need to trust that person swimming in a straight line. Exactly. Well, don't you? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> there's an element of, you know, again, having that skill set, but I think as an entry level, swimmer if you're comfortable swimming with someone's hip or their feet you know you just sort of gotta feel out so third tip we alluded to this earlier but it's basically just your dreadful pacing <laughs> yeah, i mean it's <laughs> notorious it's notorious so I, I think it's probably it's the same thing it's like you know you do a 5k park run you're always going to full gas that first 100 meters yeah. um but we were chatting about it in Mallorca. the um the professionals, they like to go hard from the gun. And I don't think it's tactically the best decision, especially for, for yourself, Harry. Yeah. Um, so what we just had a little play around with just then is actually not trying to go neck and neck with someone. So if you know that someone is potentially swimming out a little bit quicker than you, actually just going straight onto their feet and using tip number two yeah. of drafting. <laughs> yeah. um, and actually just conserving that energy because 100 to 200 meters into the race, mm. when everyone starts to fade off because they've redlined, actually you're gonna have that level of energy to press on, hold those feet, not lose the pack. Yeah. Whereas I think that's what happened in Mallorca is you redlined, yeah. and then when the pack started to split, you didn't have the gas to go with it. Yeah. That is so. my, my biggest problem is I get too excited, <laughs> and I'm like, let's go! <laughs> and then 50 meters in, I'm like, oh no, I've done it again. <laughs> but yeah, I think, um, yeah, just, just basically knowing knowing your energy, because as you said, you've got, based on your pool training and stuff, you know what you're comparable to other athletes. Yeah, yeah. And it's actually being able to apply that sort of swimming ability yeah. into the open water, and, and part of that is just pacing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> One leg up. <laughs> yeah. Awesome day, getting some tips from Andy here. I'm gonna take those away and fingers crossed, work on those for my next race. Fingers crossed you guys got some good tips from this as well. If you are ever in the Southwest area and you want a good place to do some open water swimming, I think the Marine Lake's been pretty good today. Has yeah, it? awesome, yeah. And then also, if you are in the South Wales area, that's where Andy is based. So if you want to get some open water tips. Yeah, swim, swim Andy, tips, swim sessions, yeah. Yeah. learn to swim. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm your guy. Yeah, and he's also <laughs> got 
got a YouTube channel as well. So click the link in the description below. Go and check it out. He's nearly on a thousand subs. Yeah, so about four. I think only forty-five. Yeah, or so. yeah, yeah. So let's see if we can get him there. And uh, there might be a competition for the thousand well, I'm, subscriber. I'm sure know? I can find a pair of goggles somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A signed T-shirt or something, maybe. But yeah, go and subscribe. Show him some love, and we'll see you in the next video. Three tips to be a better open water swimmer. Three, two, one, go. Something like that.